Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Hi, this is Mike O'Mara here to remind you that if you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a will, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need to help take care of the details. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Enter discount code TMOS for more savings at LegalZoom. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. And there he is. Woo! Oscar Spud Santana. Oscar, how was your weekend? It was great. Don't uh, care, because oh, we've right. got a big interview to do here. This Weird. is exciting. It's a satellite interview. Oh, satellite. Yes. What's that? Satellite. <laughs> oh, of course. Via <laughs> satellite. We are going now. He is still in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the championship pitcher from the Little League World Series. I believe we will actually speaking to him via translator, mm. but this is... Huang J. Yong. Are you there, Huang? Hello. Uh, hello. Oh, is this I'm the translator? A, I'm the translator. For Are you ready for the uh, interview? I think to make things less awkward, translator, what is what is your name? Yes, Mick we're connected. Doc. We're connected. I am uh, Mick Doc Cock. Uh, ah. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Again, Some to clarify your name. <laughs> Mick Doc Cock. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, are you ready for interview? We're, are you we're ready, ready if uh, Hi, Huang. Yeah, Huang is, is standing do we by. call him Huang? Because <laughs> I know sometimes in other cultures, uh, sir, the uh, <laughs> the first and last names are sometimes <laughs> different than they are in Can the you, Eastern great, great countries. Point, Rob, great point. So I want to know: is, should we call this guy it's, Huang? It's young, I thought. Or he, Young. It's Huang. It's Huang Jae Young. Yes, and uh, his last Jay name Jay is a, or it's a hyphenated name. Ah. You you can say Hey Wang. Hey Wang. Wang Jay. Wang Jay. <laughs> hey Wang. It's why the pictures. It's a parking <laughs> lot. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, here he comes. <laughs> here he comes now. <laughs> oh, thank you for the narration. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Hello. Hello. Is this Wang? Good afternoon. I think, thank you. This is exciting. Once again, let us reset. I, I am ready to take your questions for Huang. All right, the championship pitcher from the Little League World Series. This is the South Korean Huang J. Young. Hi, Huang. Hi. <laughs> Huang, how does it feel to be world champion? <laughs> It is a great honor to be champion of the world and a well-fought uh, battle by our team. I would like to thank my teammates and the people of South Korea for their incredible support. How exciting is this for you? You must have understood that without oh, yeah. the translator. <laughs> oh, he understands he do not speak, though. Oh, I well, see. He understands, so he <laughs> he understands, but he does not speak. But he's making. So I have great to translate answer, but uh, also bit would be far too tedious <laughs> if I had to repeat questions. Understood. <laughs> uh, yes. So now, smart ass, you ask question again, please. Yeah, I say, uh, <laughs> yes. G pop. How excited are you <laughs> to have won the Little League World Series? I don't know. 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 I do I have found the entire experience to be incredibly rewarding. I especially like the camaraderie of the other players on all of the teams around the world. I see. Is this your first time in the United States? This is uh, my first time in America. I am uh, particularly uh, enamored of your French fries. Oh, Wang. you like them? Wang, <laughs> yes. are you a PlayStation or Xbox guy? <laughs> I am uh, quite fond of uh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, okay. Wow. Thank you. That was a long answer. Yeah, he didn't even answer. He <laughs> yeah. said PlayStation or Xbox. Now, uh, you must be very excited to be in America. What is your impression of our country as a whole? I just don't need any interrupt for shut down. I should probably say that uh guardians of the galaxy are the I especially like your movies, a uh, Guardian of the Galaxy is my favorite. <laughs> Very and good. I watched that with my teammates a while I was at a Williams Port, Pennsylvania. 
Wang. <laughs> Is Jitterbug your favorite Wang Chung, Wang Chung song? Uh, hi. Oh, the, the he American band. He does not band. understand. He does not understand. You are making reference uh, from much long ago. Ask he him, cannot do that. Ask him if it's in the band if everyone is going to have fun tonight. Now you ask him. Okay. That. Hey, is everyone going to have fun tonight? I a boy. I'm a boy. I'm a boy. He says uh, you are a giant a hole. <laughs> what, what about what about George Michael's solo career? What's your take on that? <laughs> All uh, members of South Korean team have been advised to stay away from public men's room yeah. while in uh, while in Williamsport. <laughs> hey, here's a good question: Two hours after you won the championship, did you want to win another one? <laughs> 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 he says that is horrible stereotype and this is conclusion of interview due oh. to the fact that fat man with Batman logo on <laughs> gut cannot handle it. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Where are the other two? Stratton and Schoenstein? We looked everywhere, sir, but... Never mind. It doesn't matter. You gentlemen seen your midterm grades yet? Well, they're not posted yet, sir. I've seen them. Mr. Kroger. Two C's, two D's, and an F. That's a 1.2 grade average. Congratulations, Kroger. You're at the top of the Delta Pledge class. Mr. Dorfman. Hello. 0 0.2. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Mr. Hoover, president of Delta House. 1.6. Four C's and an F. A fine example you set. Daniel Simpson Day has no grade point average. All courses incomplete. Mr. Blue... Mr. Blutarski. 0. 0.0. 0. Now I want you to tell Mrs. Stratton and Mr. Schoenstein exactly what I'm about to tell you now. What's that, sir? You're out. Finished at paper, expelled. I want you off this campus at 9 o'clock Monday morning. Monday morning you show the it's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. Rob doing a whole Monday morning thing. I yeah, like that. Yeah, how about that? A little creative terrific. editing, yeah. We are live from the Cappy Fiber Studios and heard worldwide. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. We are powered by Encore Insurance Services with over 24, I'm sorry, check that, 25 million downloads. Oh, look out, oh, yeah. look out. Heard daily at MikeOmeraShow.com and exclusively over the air on the mighty 1630 KCJJ in the heart of the heartland. Go Hawks! Mike, I know when you think of Scotland, you think of bogs, right? Oh, yeah, bogs. Yeah, Wade Boggs. But did you know that North Liberty, Iowa, has a bog in it? It has Annie Boggs. Annie Boggs. Yes, of the North Liberty Boggs, Mike. Oh, she used to raise, uh, I think she raised uh, some of those award-winning pigs they had at the county fair. It was Annie Boggs and her award-winning hog. <laughs> the hogs, Boggs. That, that's one great hog. <laughs> yeah. Nice Annie. hog. Well, is it hogs or hog? Um, it's Boggs. Oh, Boggs. Bog. I'm sorry. Hog is, bog. the, is the livestock. Annie Mike. Boggs and her award-winning hogs. I wonder if she blogs about her hogs. <laughs> she has a vlog. Yeah, Annie Boggs and her... All right, forget it. Anyway, uh, the Mike O'Mara Show is a daily podcast and radio show with the greatest listeners in the world. Why? Why, Why is that, Because Mike? they get it, ladies and gentlemen. Our show today is brought to you by Harry's. That's right. We love Harry's. Uh, I'm ready for... Uh, I, I, I am so happy with Harry's. And I, I will tell you something. I... When, when I first started uh, using my Harry's Shave Kit, I will tell you this, that I had leftover razors from, uh, you know, the, the drugstores, the expensive ones. Right. And oh, yeah. I did a little of uh, my own little comparison, and I will tell you there is none. None. They are superior blades. Not only are they phenomenally priced, but they are superior. Razor blades are expensive. That's why the guys at Harry's started this, harrys.com. They make their own blades. In fact, they bought their own factory in Germany so they could cut out the middleman, and the result is their blades happen to be the best. They're about half the price of the other big brand blades, and they work better. I'm here to tell you that. I tested it. I did a little, little taste 
taste test, you know? Well, one cheek one way, one cheek the other way. I'm not even going to pursue that. I just want to tell Thank this you. to the head shavers of America. Do you know I have to shave my head less frequently ah, because the Harry's blade gives me such that. a close shave? I hate shaving my head. Harry's makes it great. I want to thank all the TMOS listeners for uh, going ahead and uh, really supporting Harry's because it's really worth it. It's a great price point, and it's a great value, and everybody that's gotten their shave kit knows that. Thanks for sending your pictures yes. of uh, getting your shave kits in the mail. That's the reason Harry's is going to be with us for a while. We're very happy. The starter set, this is an amazing deal. Listen up. $15, you get the razor, moisturizing shave cream, three razor blades, and it's brought right to your door with free shipping. Why are you paying 32 bucks or more for an eight-pack of lousy blades when it's half the price at Harry's? Go to harrys.com now, and Harry's will give you $5 off your first purchase. Just type in our code TMOS. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, and enter the code TMOS at checkout for this limited-time offer and start shaving better today. I think that means that's $10 when you yeah. uh, get your little shave kit. Brought and, to your uh, door, Mike. Brought to fantastic. your door. To your door, Rob. To your door, Mike. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. your face. Uh, <laughs> all right, before we start, uh, anything else on this, uh, any topic whatsoever, lots going on in the world lots going on in the, the world of entertainment but i have to say there's something incredibly disturbing out there on social networking that i have to address all right and that is what is horny bob spiewak's fascination with mamie van doren <laughs> a woman who is pushing 90 and what is still, wrong with your fa- still no horribly boxed. no 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 now do you not do, think she's do not boxed. side with your father even though it is your father you must you must have right. a clearer head here she the deal. is a monster rob she's she not is a monster a plastic surgery monster and he's saying things like still looking hot when yeah. you see her yeah. there was a picture that he posted Yes. I gotta find this. <laughs> there was a picture he posted of Mamie Van Doren, who is what? Well, she was a star during what the forties? No, she is sort of a a contemporary of Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield. People it, should it, know who, who she both is. happened. Is Jane Mansfield still with us? No longer with us. Mike. And I believe Marilyn Monroe not either, not with no, us. And, and this, most this of Mamie did. Van Doren's contemporaries <laughs> no longer with us. Either. But HBS is still still looking hot. No, she's not. There, these are. This if is the a light plastic catches woman. Her just right. But she Mom. was. But here's the deal. You see, my was father, she wearing a mask? She's That's my question. Eighty-three. Yes, and she's eighty-three. Still years manages young. to look stunning. Oh God! <laughs> she, now, my let, father now, is reading on. her book. You see. Well, let me just say oh, this. this. Broad does not there look is good. Jane Fonda, who is what north of seventy, <laughs> correct? Sure, sure. And Jane Fonda, who. Uh, you know, you look at Jane Fonda on a red carpet. You know she's had some work done, yeah. and you know she's got the hair and all. But you look at her and and the condition she oh, is she in. Looks great. And I say to myself, well, that is truly phenomenal that she is still she's fitter than a lot of uh, women a third of her age that are out there on the red carpet. You look at Mamie Van Doren, yes. and I am looking at a surgery. Uh, a surgery situation, or perhaps not even so something sure. not more. So sure she's, not so sure she's ever had any plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'd like I, to I, see the paperwork looks on like that. Gumby. But here's is the, it, <laughs> it's, and, and, the color and, is wrong. And, <laughs> and HBS, and I'm normally I'm all about HBS and his pinup of the day. I I love the man and I like him personally. Yes, and, and, and he's my uh, you know my partner's father. I mean, right. I, I and, and HBS has been a huge supporter of the show, and the I best. really do. I'm very fond of uh, of Robert Spiewak. And but the fact is, when he posts this the other over the weekend, it's like Saturday morning, and this comes across my desk. And I'm like, oh, this is creep of this is creep factor. Of, what are you nah, doing? HBS? Here's the deal: he's nah. reading her autobiography right now, and it's a fascinating read. He's telling me uh, some of the stories in it, and some of the people she's boned, and some of the people that wanted to bone her. And she's I'm got so great... glad the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He's reading Mamie Van Doren's autobiography. <laughs> I'm so glad this, that he's bettering did himself. You know, the reason son, the that re- she <laughs> wanted to. Bone Bone? No, do you know? <laughs> I knew that already because I read it somewhere, but it, it's confirmed now. I was oh, fascinated the story about <laughs> she turned down Clark Gable. I thought that oh, was great. God. Okay. Uh, and All also right. that uh, that Rock Hudson was a, how shall we say, an early finisher. So, oh dear! Well, Rock Hudson didn't like women, so I mean that was well. Uh, who does? He probably, so, he, he probably, but you know, but that will tell you the ages that we're talking about here. But the pictures are what I'm talking okay. about. But here's the reason behind the pictures: is yes. my father is a fan of pinups from you know last hundred years, so he friends Mamie Van Doren on Facebook. 
Right. And because he's friended Mamie Van Doren on Facebook. We found the remains of the Black Dahlia. It seems that it's Horny <laughs> Bob Spiewak is our, is our number one suspect. There we go. Yeah. He bought her book, and he's been sort of having a little bit of a Facebook interaction with her. And, you know, he's a- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, now hold every- Wait, wait, hold on. A Facebook- you know, He what, has been, been posting- cor- no, not anything. Just private. let me ask the question. Have they been corresponding on her wall? Yes. Oh, Mamie my Van Doren's God. wall, Mike. Well, wait a minute. What has she responded to anything he's written? Yes. On the wall. Yes. Then that counts as correspondence. Right. Can you? Can... I did not. I did not do the homework. I spoke to him about it last night. Oh, he said God. Mamie Van Doren replied to me on Facebook. I said, oh, Well, then. God. I Kathy, think. Let and... me just say this goes out to Kathy, his wife, and I just want to say, <laughs> darling. Darling. I'm I'm here for you. You know, you want to call my wife and I down in in Florida. We're here to support you. This has got to be excruciating now, for you. The I conversation you put up with I had with my father last night is, well, if she knows who you are, maybe it's a good time to take a trip out to Los Angeles. And then I said, and you might want to do it sooner rather than later. Because <laughs> who knows if you were to show up at Mamie's house with a bunch of beautiful tulips? <laughs> say, here you are, Jesus. doll. Don't the, think you, that's the can we, we're gonna have the to, line almost. Yeah. No, and, no, no, no. You don't have lunch no, with the Hollywood legend. No, and I'm not going legend. to say that it's just it's a little it's just a little unusual. Let's, well, let's no, put I it don't think way. it's just anything to do with the sanctity of marriage. I think that it has to do with okay, you're into her. She's written back to you. Now you're ramping it up to like 150 no, miles. Well, and, he's and not she's really 83 years old. <laughs> she is 83 years old. I I fully expect that my mushroom will be dead and buried at 83. Okay, thank you. I can't speak for my father, but I just had this thought is she's coming to an age where she might need a caretaker and my father is not loath oh. to switch careers okay so now i understand Spiewak this is another this is, well this is you know, another we do the, bar mitzvahs. the abcs of spiwak you know i mean uh, really so what you're saying is if uh, if horny bob spiwak yes. was to acquire a sponsor <laughs> for uh, for his retirement years, that would be a good thing. What, what, uh, now, where would Kathy, his lovely wife, fit into all of this? That's, if we uh, were to go to question. Kathy and say, Grandma Kathy, and that's what I call her, I'd say, Grandma Kathy, what do you think? Well, you ought to know what you should say is Grandma Mamie. <laughs> no, someday. God, I'd say, right. Grandma Kathy, what is your take on the fact that Bob has a fascination with Mamie Van Doren? She would say simply, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and she wouldn't care. No, dismissive, totally dismissive. She, now, see, that's what I always wonder about this. So she, does she not, uh, you must have had discussions with her. You've been in the room when right. the subject of the whole pinup thing has come up. Right. So, I mean, I know that there are days when there will be a pinup on my computer, and just the very fact that I've received that or that it's floating around, mm. I will get a, what is that? Yeah, yeah you know okay, what, I've never right. gotten anything okay, from I, her. But my mother, who was at one point married to my father many yes. years ago. We're talking about Sharon, the yeah. lovely Sharon, your your lovely mom. One time saw one of uh, HBS's pinups on my Facebook wall, and they're friends on Facebook, and Mike <laughs> also in real life. And that's, that's and that's a modern family, delightful. And she saw the pinup, and she said, mm, why does your father do that? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, he's he does it to promote the uh, the podcast. He does oh, it as a favor to the show. I'm well, he does. Sure. I mean, uh, we assigned him. I think, I think I assigned him that task. Did yeah, I not give him did. that yeah. task? He no. started and putting I, up pinups, and you him. tasked him with it. Yeah. And I never dreamed he would uh, attack the job with so much joy. He gets... Uh, it is. It's far beyond the benefit to the it's show passion. now. He just he yes. gets tremendous joy out of this. But he as really far does. as my mom knows, he's doing it to promote the show. Yeah, he's helping <laughs> the show out. She gave me yeah. the same look she gave me when she found out I had a DUI. Just why right. does he do that? Why do you do that to yourself? Mm-hmm. Why are you doing that? That'd be painful. How about uh, just you know, and and far be it from me to editorialize on your father's of content. Course, I mean, of this course. is his zone. I do not com- comment on the uh, the content unless it's an eighty-three-year-old woman who appears to be uh, photoshopped or wearing some sort of a- the picture on the bicycle where she was riding along. I thought where she, she looked where fantastic. her head, where her face no. looked like it had been photoshopped onto her head. But you see, the and- thing about her is. Even if she's a bit older, she was always pretty. Now, if you go she back was to all, like in her day, she was she rivaled Marilyn Monroe as far as her her attraction. She's not I, I horrifying like say a Mae West. 
some of the other starlets that held on too long. Or a Jacqueline oh, Stallone. Exactly, Mike. She's not horrifying, but and she here's has a the wonderful question I have. story to tell. How much of this is plastic surgery, and how much of this would be, say, Photoshop? Because really, at 83, there is a certain... You, you have to do something to fight Father Time. And the picture of her on the bicycle appeared to be a woman in her 20s uh, the face of a woman in her 20s riding a bicycle. It did not seem natural to me. That's the, You know the picture I'm talking about, Yeah, I about, do, right? and uh, I think that might have been a very lucky shot. I think <laughs> the no! Lighting, there the, might lighting, have no! Been, the lighting was exceptional. There might have been some uh, Instagram filtration, and there might have mm. been some after the, as we like to call in the biz, Mike, after the fact compression. Some right, touch-ups. Gonna, yeah, touch-ups. You know, I am looking at a, I'm looking at a uh, picture of her from... Uh, not too long ago, I'm not sure. It's. Uh, I mean, she it's, lived uh, through the Great Depression. As a matter, I of mean, wait a minute. Now, now here's a picture out right of here. the Great Depression. <laughs> this picture, th this picture, I'm showing you right here. Yeah. Now, now that, that picture, is not her. That is her. That that is a picture. I don't even know when that was taken, but it was probably it was probably a while ago. You know what? Think. Maybe she's had a tightening. Who knows? Well, I mean, no, that's okay face. because that's Hollywood. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. You and know? Mike, I well, say hooray for Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a wonderful town. <laughs> she, now another funny thing is there was a picture that he posted of Mamie Van Doren, and by the way, this is the most she's ever been discussed on the internet in the history of the internet. Also, she is known for two things, Oscar. She is known for yes. her fabulous rack. Yeah, okay. her fabulous gun. Know that. She, you know, she has yet. exceptionally small feet, Oscar, because mm. nothing grows well in the shade. <laughs> so <laughs> Mamie Van Doren, there was one picture when she was in front of a restaurant. Let me show you. She I was smelling that. a flower. And yeah. uh, my wife Carrie wrote. Ah, wow, I see. Nice jugs I of wine. I see. I see. There you go. Right. So uh, she was, you know, on her hands and knees, smelling a flower, and yeah. Carrie commented, "Oh dear, Grandma fell." And so, <laughs> <laughs> and that pissed my dad off a little bit. He says, "Yep, women love hating on a beautiful All right. woman." I'm seeing more and more photographs of this woman, and I'm beginning to. I'm beginning to actually become a believer that she is truly some. Okay, this picture appears to be taken in 04, which was 10 years ago when right. she would be in his 70s. But see, I want to see a more recent picture. Do you? I want to see. This is a picture taken. Bring in out the now. autopsy photo. This looks like this picture was taken in 2004. See, that's good looking woman there. That, that is an attractive Even at woman. 74, that's pretty at 74, impressive. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Is what it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's uh, got the, good genes. Yeah, they, you can see them in that picture. Very tight jeans, certainly. <laughs> wow. What about obsessing over somebody that's uh, maybe 60 instead of 83? Oh, well, that would be for him a younger woman. Uh, maybe <laughs> perhaps, we're, perhaps we're judging too much. But the, the, the photos of As a woman, rule, my father camera, has good the taste. The camera loves her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the camera yeah. does love her. Yeah, mm -hmm. we see that very well. Oh, stop doing this. This very is not clear. good for the podcast. If you're, uh, if you're a Ustreamer today, if you're following us uh, you know, on the video feed, you're, you're having a very good day. Are they, Pony? Are they able to see this with all the t technical things we've been they doing? They can see everything. That's right. Oh, that's good. That's, with uh, that's everything wonderful. left in and nothing left out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? Here I was preparing to bust the balls of Horny Bob Spiewak, and at the same time, and now I'm beginning to say, you know, really, she she was a phenomenon ten years ago, right? And she, and there's no reason why she wouldn't continue to be that way today. And who knows? Maybe if you know somebody were to end up in the uh, in the home of Miss Van Doren and you squinted just right, who knows? It might be 1960 all over again. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Jesus. Do you think? Do you think your father's obsession is based on reading the bio? Is that what it is? He's I think they a... walked hand in hand. I think you know he loves pinups. He's actually his favorite of all time is Marilyn Monroe. And I didn't mean to say that like an old man. Then why did you say it like a 98-year-old? Yeah, I like the pictures of the Marilyn Monroe. I mean, it's what, Monroe. What I meant it's to Monroe. say. It's Marilyn Monroe. I meant to say Marilyn Monroe, okay? Yeah, we're going to go down and get some ice cream at the uh, Marilyn Monroe show. Yeah, we're going to go yeah. to the druggist and the grocer and then see yeah. Marilyn Monroe. Th this is one of my favorite restaurants. <laughs> Re restaurants. <laughs> the restaurants. Oh, and by the way, Mike, happy birthday this weekend to Sonny Jerk. <laughs> yes, it was sunny. It was sunny. Jurgensen's birthday. I hope he, he went out and had a nice meal at a restaurant. Mike, I think he was 80. No. Was Sonny really 80? Yeah, I think so. Is Sonny 82? That seems to be the theme for today. Yeah. Sonny Jurgensen. Wow. Good for him. Yeah, sunny wow, and 80. Also, today's man. weather outlook. 
<laughs> that is fantastic. Hey, so, well, a salute to Sonny Jurgensen. Many, many uh, more years of, uh, of health, and uh, keep doing the broadcast. Good job. The, uh, but I think what happens, because of my father's obsession with Marilyn Monroe, is that she's sort of a link to Marilyn Monroe. Because they competed for the same parts, they had a lot of the same interest, and they came up at the same time. And the fact that he can have even just sort of a distant a dalliance, Facebook, a no, conversation. no, 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 a Facebook uh, back and forth, that must be kind of cool for him. Yeah, I guess. I you mean, know? So yeah. I, I wish him all the Would best. Would you like to Do know- think, How uh, many other people are searching or seeking out conversations with her, though? Mm, maybe that's why he's enjoying <laughs> such great success. <laughs> <laughs> Get, let me see. Is he on there? I mean, if I was to go to uh, Mamie Van Doren's Facebook page, would 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 Horny Bob Spiewak be around there? Would he be floating around Probably there? Probably on there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Click this tab to go to Bob Spiewak. No, he probably right. is. Yeah. So wonderful uh, profile picture she's got, and then the then the uh, the picture of her with the flowers. She's changed her cover page to that, so she uh, she does look uh, interesting. She and looks the thing is, is that for a woman of 84, I think, if I mean, take her beauty out of it, what 84-year-old knows how to use Facebook that well? She's all over it. Unless she he's is? being trolled. Oh, no. Oh, what if it's oh, just what if it's a Maureen, rando? Mike, what if it's Maureen O'Hara? <laughs> <laughs> well, HBS, you gave me a lot of joy this weekend. What if it's a, a lot of head-shaking, <laughs> sighing joy. What the hell was he thinking? My God. My anyway. father, the complicated flower. Yes, very, very complicated and very delightful. We'll take a break. Come back with more on The Michael Mara Show. Hi, this is Carla O'Mara, and I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about Rob Spiewak's bag. Rob loves a lot of things, but what he loves more than anything is having listeners fill up his bag week after week with wonderful messages. Would you be a sweetie and drop Rob a message for his bag? Send it right along to Rob at MikeOmeraShow.com. Don't forget the two Bs. Then every Thursday, who knows? Rob might reach into his bag and pluck out a message from Y-O-U. Please, help Rob with his bag. Because if you don't, he might ignore it. And then it'll start to stink. Wow. <laughs> so I'll just pause after that and think about that made one. Made me for Van a O'Mara. Well, wow. welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Hey, Rob, we need uh, that music again because oh. this portion of the uh, Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by. Yes? It's oh. brought to you by. Forgive me, Mike. Compulsive 3.0 for iOS and Android. Compulsive 3.0 has been released. Take your scores to the next level with all new power-ups. Now you can dust off tiles, <laughs> clean colors away, and organize the board however you want for 10 seconds. <laughs> with three game modes, multiplayer and the new power-ups, What's not to like? So listen, it's a great game. <laughs> Apple featured Compulsive 3.0 as a best new game on iTunes. The LA Times said, if Ellsworth Kelly designed a video game, it would look like TM Soft's Compulsive. Who is Ellsworth Kelly? That's I've seen, what I'm trying to I seen his paintings. You know what he okay. does? He paints what? with squares. Ah. That's why. Ah. He's a painter that paints with squares. You know who loves him? Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yes, and Mamie Van Doren. Yeah. <laughs> and we think that's a compliment. Uh, everyone, oh, there it is. Yes, wonderful. Everyone, please download the update and then leave a five-star review. That's what we want you to do for Compulsive. It's a free download. Uh, everybody's addicted to the game that plays it. The game is a lot of fun. That's why they call it Compulsive. Yes. Remember, those five-star reviews would mean the world to our good friend Todd Moore, who invented the game Compulsive, and now... Here's his best friend, Oscar. Oh, yes. Uh, I had a good uh, evening with Todd. It probably lasted about 18 hours. And, oh, and, no. oh, my God. <laughs> on Saturday night, and he mentioned um, that a lot of people, uh, they reviewed Compulsive initially when it came out. Sure. When an update comes out, so 3.0 is out now, all the reviews go away. So if you've re reviewed in what? the past, you have to review again. That's all he asks. Update your review. <laughs> Update your review yeah. and Please. do it today. Please. 
Remember those five-star reviews for Todd Moore. Again, Compulsive 3.0 by TM Soft. It's 100% fluoride free. Thank you very much. <laughs> Compulsive. Right, welcome back to the show. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I will tell you this. For all of my friends that I said it to in Washington, D.C. when I was leaving and everyone was going, right. Florida in the summertime. What do you do in Florida in the summertime? And I would look at them disdain. Do all of your friends need to have their adenoids out? It, hey, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean you're going to Florida in the summertime? Isn't that going to be really ridiculously hot? And I looked at them disdainfully, and I said, I said, are you high? It's just as hot in Washington, D.C. during the summer yeah. as, it in, as it is in Florida, you moron. <laughs> no, I'm the moron. I'm the yeah. idiot. Yeah, oh, my mom, brain's got the candy shell. Your mom goes I'm to college. Idiot. It is. It is so. It, the, you know. I look. I. I know. Balls have uh, somehow gotten the 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 nod to describe extremely warm weather. Yes. But it is. I have to say the definition, the dictionary definition of hot as balls mm. down in here. You know how I know. This How's is that? how I know. I'm watching the weather forecast with our favorite weatherman today, and I know people get pissed off when we talk about the Today Show, but Al Roker, who are they, they are literally working him to death after his 60th birthday. Right. He's out in Los Angeles, and he is demonstrating this massive bubble in the south that's going to move into the mid-Atlantic of a heat wave that's right. coming. Wow. And I will tell you this, I am looking at those numbers that he's talking about are so scary dangerous, and I'm saying, well, those are low numbers compared to what we have here every single day. I have this is the third week now we are going into where temperatures are in the upper 90s uh. routinely every single day and the fact is with the humidity the temperature outside especially yesterday feels like I'm an, I'm not exaggerating 105 to 106. Beautiful beach weather though. That's perfect time Beautiful. to take a dip. Yeah. No, it's not a perfect time to do anything no. outside. It's a perfect it's time to plan your sucks. funeral. It's just nasty. A quick aside, Mike, about nasty. Al Roker. One of the things I hate about him being at the VMAs, when he goes to his produced piece, did you watch this morning? When I did. He, when he does his live pieces, he's all very excited. But when they right. go to the videotape, it's quiet whispering, Al. Look, and and what we know now, this is it. And Jay-Z and Beyonce. Exactly. What a, so, what a fabulous thing. I tried to watch the uh, VMAs last night. I tried to uh, no. take a peek. Oh, and, you didn't uh, like it? I couldn't uh, log uh, that much time with it. <laughs> didn't really uh, didn't really care for it. It, it. Now, really, when I watch, especially <laughs> of, all the, of all the award shows, you know, I, I, there's the, the reality of the situation is that, thank God, that I have a man in his 40s and a man in his 30s that I work with because right. here's the fact. For those of you that might want to think that you're going to be preserving yourselves uh, for in your mind, and you know, time will not march on. The fact is, there are there are ir irrefutable truths in our world that time does march on. And sure. when I watch the VMAs more than any other award show, that is when I realize that slowly but surely. Time is simply passing me by. That American culture is something that I'm not even beginning to recognize anymore. When I, just, I click I on it, Mike, it. it's like watching an unsubtitled film from Czechoslovakia. I <laughs> Absolutely. see that there are things you going on, some of the but it's it's very well. Foreign you're an old soul, Rob. So you're this actually probably you probably started experiencing this when you were in your 30s because <laughs> you didn't really track. But I, I mean, just, for I me, out to Carrie, I said, "Is Joe Cocker on yet? When oh, is he coming yeah. on?" God. Rob, you know, I hung on, and Oscar, I hung on as long as i could yes. i truly did i i hung on to, to just say who's this i'm telling you now the artists the songs the mm. albums now i can rattle off some people that you know who doesn't know beyonce and jay-z that's right who doesn't know taylor swift miley cyrus the household names but then we get into the next tier you know and after we get to that uh that very very unhealthy looking young lady named Lords is that it? What's Lourdes. her name? Lord foul mouth Lord Lourdes. Lourdes. No, but there's there's a great picture of Lord smiling and and, and she's with happy. that Face with break? that painted no. with that painted lipstick but she has it, where you know it looks I, like a cartoon mouth. It's I'm scary. Gonna be I think Royals, I think Perez, of all the people I'm going to quote, I think Perez Hilton actually tweeted this. He said, uh, "Looking at this picture of Lord's happy is like it's like finding a leprechaun when he has his pot of gold." <laughs> <laughs> In the horror movie sense, yes. is that what it is? Because yeah, yeah. Oh, no. now, you know, when I think of Leprechaun, it's like, catch your gold, yeah. <laughs> I'm the evil Leprechaun. I don't know. It's just uh, I tried because there, it, it really, for, for the month of August, there is 
nothing. Zero. And I mean Zero. nothing on television. Nothing. The cable channels right now, every one of them, Cinemax, HBO, Showtime, they should be getting out their checkbooks and sending a check to every single customer for the garbage that yep. they are putting mm. on their movie channels. You're it's right. that bad. It's very, very Do frustrating. Do you know what I so, watched yesterday? I watched well, something from 1920. <laughs> no, no. And I can't believe I stayed with it, but there was no alternative. I watched Cabin Boy. Oh. The movie oh. with Chris Elliott. Like See, a, a your standards, you don't have horrible. any standards. So, but I you kept know. watching it saying, this, well, I said, what am I going to do? I'll stay with it for Letterman's cameo because I like Letterman's oh, cameo. No. <laughs> and then I just found myself watching. I said, what am I doing to myself? What am I doing mm, to the people the around me? It's horrible. The Robin well, Williams tribute was horrible on the VMAs. I didn't even yes, see it. Yes, it. it was very it was short. Like so I saw quick. that. I, was like, I saw oh, that. It was very quick. Bother. You know been. what it was to me? You know what it was to me, really? Yeah. This is what I thought. This is like, okay, here's an aging star. Most people sort of remember maybe Mrs. Downfire. We're not going to waste our time talking yeah. about... You know, uh, speaking of that, we can move on to our, you know, the, the Emmys because the fact is... Uh, I think that uh, I predicted last week this uh, this show will have a tremendous uh, audience based on uh, everybody waiting for the memorial segment. And Rob has a prediction about the Emmys this that is, uh, my is rather negative, and he's normally not a negative guy. Going so into the Emmys tonight, I think uh, you know the, all the networks uh, they take turns since yes. all the TV you know take they take turns. Tonight's on NBC, and the host is Seth Meyers. Mm -hmm. And I predict that tomorrow at this same time. Mike O'Mara and myself will no longer be Seth Meyers fans. Really? Well, honestly, not, I, I liked him on Weekend Update, but I haven't. Uh, I've seen his show. You know, I, I like his show. Much. His show really? is his like a, pretty good. No, but it's like a watered down version of Weekend Update. Yes. And he used to do, you know what, 10 minutes a week. 30 weeks a year. Uh, now he's got to do it every night. And I, I, I don't mind it. It's, it seems like it's fun. He's so, I think he is so married to prepared material, and he's great at delivering prepared material. And you when know, a when Weekend we're Update about, was well-written, he was one of the best. But You know, he, as we talk about it, Rob, as we're sitting here talking about it, I'm thinking to myself, you know, the entire NBC lineup is just this factory of uh, preordained Lauren. stars that really didn't get there it's on their own volition. Uh, you know, they got there because they were tapped by a particular guy. And I, I and that's just not the way it used to work. David no. Letterman got his television show because he was an amazing stand-up comedian yep. that went Writer, on Johnny too. Carson and succeeded. And that to me is like the, yeah, it's old-fashioned again. Here I am dating myself. But the fact is, that's the way it went down. Jay Leno, even though I wasn't a big fan, he got his gig because of his stand-up work and his writing and his material. And then we began to tap the people that were just really in the Saturday Night Live have, family, the Lorne Michaels family. some new insight that I just uh, discovered, I think, last week. Okay. Uh, I'm reading this new book called Blockbusters. And Is it about video rental? No, no, no. It's just about <laughs> media and really why the film the te television and film business spends so much money on a few key franchises okay and why they do that and I was just it's interesting to see that uh, our friend Dominique actually uh, you know he, he suggested the book to me so I started reading the book and they talk about how Saturday Night Live a lot of people question why it's even around anymore uh -huh. and they it's around because the network pays those guys so little that even if one the performers, or, you yeah, mean? the performers, even if one or two, they're basically a minor league system mm -hmm. to the yeah. entire network. Yeah, so, and it's the cheap. It's the cheap way. It's exactly. I, I I'm going to amplify on your point here. Please, it is exactly like a minor league system, a farm system for a major league baseball team, because you are not going to have to pay. The if you get a breakout star, you're not going to have to pay them. You've already locked them up. It's already in their contract that their and first two the, movies are under their thumb. Wow. It's all, everything you catch, is built in. And if you catch lightning in a bottle, you're you know like a Jimmy Fallon who yes. happened to you know you know be a very talented guy. Uh, the fact is that's that's the way it's going to work. Faye. Yep. Yeah, Tina Faye, yeah, Tina Tina Faye, and they, they get that right. But and I hate to say it, Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. But what you do, and I don't know what the book says about this, don't you believe when you do it that way, you completely prohibit the walk-ons from, from, yeah, from doing anything? They, they you know, actually, the guys that are working out in the comedy within club. Within the book, there's a lot of, and we don't know this because we're so Saturday Night Live guys now, and I, right. I would consider myself a guy now just because I didn't used to be an SNL guy until I started working with you guys. And I said, um, well, why – why wouldn't everybody go there? And he says, and within the book, she mentions that 
not everybody that gets the SNL offer takes it because a lot of people look at that contract and say, I'm signing a deal for a lifetime. This yeah, is you're it. Right. And yes, they're going to put me on TV, but if I don't break out, they own everything regardless. And they throw and they throw and they throw you away. Yes. Yeah. And I'm they just cast to, you away and that's it. Trying you know? to think back, when is the last time someone not an SNL feature performer did something that was a huge breakout? Now like Andy Kaufman's big break was on Saturday night. Louis C. K. Louis C. K. Now but he was a host, right? No, but Louis C. K. I think is old school in that he made his, he his hay teeth. With his stand-up his and working the clubs mm -hmm. and his phenomenal stand-up. And then, uh, and you know, we'll see him at the Emmys tonight. Right. Uh, you know, we'll see how he does. But there is a breakout guy, and that's a guy that did it the old-fashioned way. So, and I really think on a talent level, you've got, a, you've got someone who was not in the Lorne Michaels machine who is infinitely more talented in the area that he has chosen than some of these other it's people. It's cheaper saying. to have, to basically grow your talent on Saturday Night Live sure. and put a subpar product out. Because I sit there like, well, this show sucks now. What, what do, and then It's she, horrible. She starts naming out these few stars that become tent poles for the entire network on right. their other shows. And, and it's, a, it's, it's a total formula, and it's, and it's yeah. a, a watered-down formula. Yes. And it's really, it's, it's really just what America is with our consumer culture as well. It's the, it's the, the, the Saturday Night Live would be like the Walmart yeah. of comedy. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's what it is. But and for us, if you don't look at it that way, you expect the best of the best to be on that program. And if they're looking at that program to say, okay, if we get one or two stars out of this next three seasons, then it's paid for itself. Wow. But you can tell me because I don't watch it, both of you. I don't watch it nearly as much as both of you do. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Oscar watches Fallon a lot. You still watch the late-night shows a lot because yeah. it's part of your job to right. farm uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the late shows. My question to both of you guys, they don't have the traditional – uh, volume of stand-ups that used to come on no, these shows, no, no, right? No, no. They, well, they don't exist anymore, Letterman right? still probably has a stand-up on Four Nights and Five. Does he really? He's yeah. got a book so, that's, so Letterman that's does just Letterman does because he's old school. Yeah. He's old school. Okay. But, yeah, the but, other but Fallon don't. doesn't do it. No, and when you call Saturday Night Live the Walmart of comedy, I agree, and there's just aisle after aisle after aisle of Chris Kattan. Yes. <laughs> well, right. What happened Fantastic. to him? <laughs> All right. Uh, go to aisle number 17 for Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> Very good. We'll take a break. Uh, speaking of the Emmys, we'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to The Michael Mara Show. Welcome back to The Michael Mara Show. Sorry, I had to get to the hook. Uh, welcome back to the show. So we've been goofing around for a few weeks about our Amazon page, and that's fine. But we need to remind you of one very important fact. Shopping through our Amazon portal remains the single best way to support the show. Remember, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it means the world to us. The next time you need to buy anything, just go to MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon or click the Amazon button on our website, then shop like you normally would. It's that simple. And now here to talk about our latest Amazon fan purchase, here's Rob Spiewak. Take it away, Rob. Thank you, Mike. This week's purchase is a Strathwood Brentwood four-piece all week. All, ah, all weather Hold on, let's say it. No, we got to go all the yeah, way back I to the very bad. beginning. Oh, I'm Such you're, a gorgeous you're setup. And I tonight. practiced it, too. Oh, all right, oh, one God. more time, Mike. Sorry. Oh, just click the Amazon button on our website, then shop like you normally would. It's that simple. And now, with our Amazon Fan Purchase of the Week, here's Rob Spiewak. Thanks, Mike. It's a Strathwood Brentwood four-piece all-weather furniture set. Four-piece outdoor furniture set includes two chairs, love seat, and coffee tables, plus cushions and four throw pillows. On sale this week, and with Amazon Prime, free delivery. Back to you, Mike. Thank you. Nice job, Rob. Don't you think so, folks? Okay, well, maybe next time he'll get it. Anyway, uh, you see, Amazon has everything. We just need to get you there through our portal. And yes, never fear, Amazon still sells tubas, tang, brass knuckles, mayonnaise, and corrective shoes. If you need it, Amazon has it always open at Mike O'Mara's show.com slash Amazon, the best way to save money and support this show. Bookmark Amazon at MikeOmeraShow.com and rest easy, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. All right, Emmy time tonight. Yeah. Um, talked about it last week, the fact that uh, we're probably all going to be looking in on oh, it. Yeah. And I don't know, it's a, uh, is it, uh, does it make me kind of the ambulance chaser, look at the car wreck guy that I'm really just watching this to 
I, I'm I'm dying to watch it. I can't wait to see it. I want to see the tribute to Robin Williams. I, I know I'm going to be sad, you, but I, I want to be sad. To see that. It doesn't see it make you more, It doesn't make you morbid. I stay with the Oscars every year for the death reel. But you know what I think this is, Mike? This is something more. This is for the literally millions of people around the country that felt a connection to Robin Williams in some way or another. The fact that we're going to get to see Billy Crystal sort of send him off tonight in this setting. This is going to be our closure. This mm. is going to be our yep. Robin point. Williams Great funeral. Great point, Rob. Great point. I agree. I totally agree with that. And I and you know now I'm actually really pumped up to see it because I think that uh, not only is it going to be a good Emmys, there's some uh, breakout shows. Uh, right. You know the Netflix show that Oscar turned me on to with House of Cards. Yes. And, uh, you know Homeland, and then we've got Breaking Bad. Uh, you know there's some real talent up there, and uh, I just want to go if I can just go on the record and uh, and say this. And this does not in any way make me any kind of homophobe or anything like that. But I'm here. To to say this uh i'm looking forward to the emmys if jim parsons wins another emmy award i will throw my uh i will throw my computer through the television screen oh, I, see. I, see. I mean uh you know i i i, I believe we've rewarded this young man for his note and i think that his that's, one uh, note Mike? That's his his one single note yes. that he has played mm-hmm. again and again and again i you know i don't is it how i met your mother is that what it is is that uh, the it, uh, it's called the big bang it's big, the bang, big bang right theory. yeah what is it the big Which bang one of those the big bang what is it the, the big, big bang, bang theory. theory okay i don't i i i haven't looked in so maybe i'm you don't look at that i tried <laughs> i was actually perplexed and i was like well maybe i'm the dummy and I started really. No. I said, "I'll watch another episode." I I couldn't get it. I couldn't get into any it. show where the girl from Blossom is one of the drawing cards is not a great show. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not a great dick. show. Well, no, it's true. Me, Blossom, I'm, Mike, it's me and Blossom Bialik. was a franchise. And oh, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take a peek here and just go through and see if there's anything else. Whoa. Uh, of, uh, of <laughs> that was my Joey, Joey Lawrence. Lawrence what can can you can Whoa. either one of you? It's Whoa. either one of you even capable? Of summing that show up in a sentence for me. The because Big I have no theory? idea what it's like. Yeah. Three nerds live together, and one of them is banging a hot chick across the hall. Yeah. And they, uh, it's supposed to be smart comedy. It's I don't think it's that smart. It's n- not that smart. No. No. It's actually really dumb. <laughs> it's, it's dumb, dumb comedy. Show. They've worked so hard to be smart, it's dumb. It's a Chuck Lorre show, right? I think so. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Just just because we don't do this very often and we don't get into it, but since I want a lot of people to watch it tonight because I'm, uh, I just want to see the send off to uh, to our friend Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. I'll go through these. Uh, we've got uh, outstanding lead actress in a drama series, and and you guys watch a little bit of television. Sure. Tell me if I'm missing something. Uh, I'll give you something. I I'm probably the only one that watches this. I like the uh, the lady uh, Michelle Dockery who's in Downton Abbey. I like her, and she's uh, nominated for outstanding lead in a drama Can't series. Can't go wrong. I can see that happening mike i think I it's also, called downtown abbey Dan, downtown i'm pretty sure Dan Town Dan abbey. Town abbey. hey mike when you're Dan alone and life is bringing oh. you down do you know how do you know Don't that that's going to be good that's going to be good for now another it's, month for him Dan Town abbey Dan Town <laughs> abbey yeah it's a uh, abbey about a whole bunch of people that troll on the internet do you realize that i do you realize i am going through uh this and one two three Four of the six nominees, I've actually I actually watched their show. Wow. Juliana Margulies, I watched The Good Wife. Yes. Claire Danes, I watch in Homeland, and Robin Wright, I adore in uh, House of Cards. So those are four of the six. The other two are uh, Lizzie Kaplan in uh, Masters of Sex, Box. <laughs> yeah, she is quite Box. <laughs> and Kerry Washington, I wa- I tried Scandal. Scandal you watch Scandal, Scandal, right? Hulu Plus. Uh, Hulu Plus. You you watch you watch Scandal. A I lot, do. Don't I do. You? Uh, the uh, first. Uh, two seasons I was like all right I'm really into this and then it and you and just when you think you can't believe anything more it just got really over the top though I watch because I know that within three episodes at least two of them are worth worth watching these days at right least. Now, question, now the outstanding go ahead Rob. question for the room I think that Robin Wright should win but will there be sort of a Hollywood Emmy backlash against the fact that it's an internet only show? Do you think it won't count? I know it's got. Kevin I think it's, it's going to be the opposite. It. I think there's a chance that it could go be the a other way. It'll be a darling, and, and it's going to be now. Okay. Hey, here are some new rules. I don't think it's that industry. Uh, the, Not the, the, anymore, you know, unless it's fixed. Well, you know, no, I don't the, think the, that's going to happen. The the rules of engagement as far as Netflix is concerned mm. they're a bona fide network they're an HBO now true true so enough. that's the way people look at it for example I just read a story on uh, new tech for one uh, coming out uh, tomorrow oh right with promos uh, no promos <laughs> Didn't have time for those. Uh, but very no, busy with your 18-hour date that Comcast right. Comcast is so worried about Netflix and Hulu plus mm-hmm. that 
on college campuses because people exclusively consume that way. Yeah. They are offering free cable on internet over via internet to all these students across the country. Desperation. Wow. Yeah. Desperation. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Doesn't look That's good. Doesn't it look is. good for them. Uh, the outstanding lead actor in a drama series. I'm glad I, I decided that I'd read these nominees. I've seen every one of these. Okay. Uh, Brian Cranston, Breaking Bad. Kevin Spacey in House of Cards. Fantastic. John Hamm. Uh, yeah, I don't watch it anymore, but I used to watch Mad Men. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Daniels in the newsroom. I watched that. Yep. I think he's fantastic. That's an incredible category, man. Uh, Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey oh, oh, in yeah. uh, True oh, Detective. Yeah. That is a category as far as I'm Prediction? concerned. Prediction? And it's uh, well, you know, it's impossible, but it, I think it's a slam dunk. It's going to be Brian Cranston. Yeah, I mean, and I to, think that the, you have to give it to Walter White. You and I to. think that's a shame for Kevin Spacey. And I think sometimes the voting will go this way: if Cranston wins for that, someone else will win for House of Cards. Ah. But uh, since that show is gone, a lot of times they get yeah. a little edge there. True. And uh, all right, the, I'm just going to give you two more uh, outstanding comedy series: The Big Bang Theory, no. Louis. Uh, Modern Family, Orange is the New Black, Silicon Valley, and Veep. You watch Silicon nah, Valley, right? Yeah, uh, but Orange is the New Black should win. Should I hope, yeah. I hope Louie win wins. I think that is a consistently good show. And Pretty good stuff. Really, yeah. really good stuff. And Outstanding Drama is Breaking Bad, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones. There it is for the first time. House of Cards, Mad Men, and uh, True Detective. So those are your, uh, just a, you know, a few of the Emmy categories. I think it's going to be... I, I really do. I think it's going to be a tremendously uh, viewed uh, award show, and those those ratings have been slipping for those award shows. I haven't in the carved past. out time to watch an award show outside of tonight's show because even with um, with the MTV music, um, um, the video awards and VMAs, I sat there and I was like, eh, I'll peek in here and there. Sure, but this I want to watch. Yeah, this is you know this is for the first time in a while. This is an event piece of programming. This is appointment TV. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Do you think, Mike, that they will? embrace the, uh, the what is it the the game of thrones do you think that, um, what's your gut on that you follow that no i don't nah, i really was don't good, think but it wasn't that great is it, it wasn't that far great. outside no, the no, mainstream no, no, no. Nah, it is and it's just you know when, when you get a when you get a show for example like breaking bad which is uh something we can all wrap our heads around yeah the, you have to you have to write in pl plausible scenarios and mm -hmm. i think that's a tremendous challenge with game of thrones yeah you know, in a fantasy type of thing, it's just, you can go anywhere. Nobody's going to catch you on it because it's just all this fantasy all the time. She had three dragons, you know? Khaleesi did, and now yeah. she has two. Well, that's like, budget I don't cuts. get that. That's budget yeah, cuts. It, yeah, they, you know, push people into wells and, you know, it, it all goes out. <laughs> I still watch it because there's nothing better on, but uh, mm -hmm. it also is reminding me as I'm watching all these nominees here, I'm saying, okay, please give us more new content. It's Please. coming. It's been a long, you know, hot to look, summer. Right, to look at that, uh, the, those lists of nominees, you would think television would be better because there yeah. was a lot of good things. But the thing is, is there's five shows, five good shows. That's there's it. also yeah. the dead season right now. Yeah, it is totally the dead season. So I think it's going to be interesting, and I think everybody should watch for a send off to uh, Robin Williams. Here, here. And, uh, really, I hope uh, I've never rooted more for Billy Crystal to hit it out of the park. And really, I, I don't think he's going to. No, trip I'm up on this. Extraordinarily optimistic nice about things. it. I think I'm he'll do well. To that. Uh, I want to talk about a sweet little movie that I finally got out to uh, to the movies with Mrs. O'Mara. Guardians and of the Galaxy? A, uh, did not go see Guardians of the Galaxy, Oscar. I'm terribly uh, sorry. It was as though was really Was it the comic book here, movie? It was, uh, it was not, no. It, I will tell you this. It was as though the gods were conspiring against me and uh, my lovely wife. You know, we finally have a babysitter down here, and she does a really, really nice job. And so we've been going out on dates. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. Friday rolls around, and we got our little free time. And so it was second off engagement to the movie with theaters. The, second engagement with the new babysitter? Yes, second one. And yeah. uh, you Always know, she's, free on Fridays. Got to get them ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice. You know, I'm really just trying to live down here, okay? Yeah, you are. I'm trying. You don't help my cause when you say something like that. It really well, the hot one was busy, help. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the hot one had out. a better offer. She the hot one out. had a better yeah. offer, and so she's out of there. You know, no, no, you know, no refund. <laughs> Mike, you, know, you don't, <laughs> don't lower yourself to his level. Move well, on. Well, the fact is, no, you, you, you get one shot. You get one shot, and really, you've always they're, said they're, that. We got, we, we were gonna, we tried for a double, a double date. We tried to actually go Friday and Saturday, and I don't mean the double date with another oh, couple. I mean, okay. we tried to go out Friday and Saturday, but she wasn't available. The the mm. new one on Saturday, mm. and really, that's just for me. It's like, okay, yeah. I want yeah. to, you know. I You're testing the, the waters. Yeah. I, I want the full timer. You know, yeah. I want to hey at, a, at the drop of a hat. Right. That's it. At the drop of a hat. Well, now That's that you've got Mrs. For. Trumbull, all is well. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
the gates of hell opened up down here. I tell you about the fact that, you know, there are thunderstorms and then there are thunderstorms. Here in South Florida, the way it works is they're everywhere. They're all over the state. Why are you now? Why are you laughing? Well, why? when you mentioned the gates of hell, I thought that was your community. I didn't know that you were talking about the weather in your fabulous gated community. Yeah, it's really hell down here. <laughs> It's the manicured lawns and the the nice people and the safe neighborhood yeah. and beautiful temperatures. I've 200 days there. of 250 days oh, of the year. Step it, right in. There's a humble yeah. man. I've come to the gates of hell. And here we go. Now and now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Oscar Santana to slander where I live. Now, right no, I, I, I appreciate the fact that the roads are a little wider for those ambulances to go through. Yeah, that's so you can always pass. You. <laughs> you can where's, always pass. Rob, where's the music? Where's the music? We're talking about it for Christ's sake. Come on now. Yes, the roads are extra wide just so they can get all the emergency They vehicles. don't have two, but four shuffleboard. Yes. No, we oh. don't. Did no you waiting. see shuffleboard anywhere in my community? If I'm lying, I'm saying yes. Well, you know what? If, <laughs> th that might not have been someone with a shuffleboard stick. It might have just been a cane. Now, there was no. a guy with a metal detector walking around. Well, that's probably a landscaper, and it was a weed whacker, you hump. Actually, Mike, it was a metal detector. He was checking everyone's hips. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. I don't even remember. What the? I almost said the word. You're the talking about, talking about how about? you uh, had a wonderful date to a movie that was charming. Well, no. The, the thunderstorms down here, uh, they're frustrating because I'm a, I'm a weather file, and I like to see what happens. Right. And they'll say thunderstorms, and then they don't arrive. The thing is, that you'll, they'll, be, they'll be all around you. They'll be everywhere, and then you'll see this black sky, and it's making its way into your community, and then nothing. Well, Friday night, finally, uh, it arrived. Mm. And I will tell you something. The chain lightning down here, I think the state of Florida, if I'm not mistaken, has the most lightning hits of any state in the union. And it is really, really that's, scary again, if Mike, you that's, get that. That's the hips. That's all the metal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's there. <laughs> That's exactly they what They conduct. It is, yeah. But you know yes. what? It's Mike, it's almost like a progressive yeah. slot machine, isn't it? Okay. That every time you miss a thunderstorm, the right. jackpot redoubles. <laughs> so well, the next time the thunderstorm comes, it could be even bigger. We when we get them, we get them yeah. and we're going to the movie theater and this one was in the distance. It was a wall of it almost looked like uh brown dust that had been kicked up. That's ah. how yeah, this thing was coming in and I said, "Okay, we're not missing this one." And I, you'd love this. I ran from the car to the uh, theater, leaving Carla behind because I am so, <laughs> I'm so terrified of getting hit by lightning down here. I was, I was like, Such and a she's gentleman. like, and she, no, she Prince turns charming. around. I turn around and after I get under the little eave at the uh, shopping yes. center where the movie theaters. I turn around. I look back at her, and she is still standing like out in the open with a few drops of rain going. <laughs> What are you running for? Way to go, jackass! With the, you know, my my very brave wife with the with, with the thunder coming down. I'm like, look at the thunder and the lightning. I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. It's gonna oh, no. hurt me. Oh my god, don't hurt me. And then we went in real quick. I'll give you the little review. Okay. We went in and we saw uh, the Helen Mirren movie. Oh, across where she, the street uh, or something. Where, where she is the restaurant from? owner that is 100 feet across the street from the Indian restaurant. Right. And it. Was find the name, beautiful. Rob, you? you know, what's that? I asked Rob Ford to find the name. The colors in the preview. 100 I... feet uh, to, to, to to sex. I don't know what it is. That's what, 100 feet till sex and a thunderstorm. Yeah, 100 feet across the road. Something. Does I it qualify as a Bollywood picture because of its Indian setting? No. It's a 100-foot no. journey. 100-foot journey, and it does not call it qualify as Bollywood, although it's got a very heavy Indian influence. It was, you know, for the weeks that we have had, the two weeks with... The horrible news that we have yes. been living with. And, uh, you know, tomorrow I'll talk a little bit about the fact that uh, I've been venting all of my my depression and my frustration and my strong thoughts about our world on social networking. That's what I do. I'm not doing it here. Right. I'm doing it there. What? Uh, if you're if you're uh, wanting to watch the hits and I'm sure it's a beautiful film, Mike. Oh, I, I'm sure it's No one's going to see it. Uh, they're not even in the top ten. Yeah, of course they're not. It's a, <laughs> because it's a beautifully acted, wonderful story of love and and there are uh, movies I've rebirth. Never heard. The Expendables three, which is a flop, is ahead of this. Thing. Yeah, but to be fair, Oscar, to be fair, the box office would be bigger if everyone wasn't paying senior prices. True, very true. 
Have I asked both of you to take a steamship to hell today yet? Have I done that? Ah, yes. Yeah. Room for All two. Right. You bastards. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with more. This is uh, Old Man and the Babies on uh, the Michael Mary Show Network. Thank you. We'll, take, we'll be right back. I've got a great idea, Joe. You're familiar with the Omericast? Yes, it's the uh, Marcus Serta show where he plays highlights from the, all the more network shows. Well, I want our show, the Rob and Joe show, to be an Omericast highlight show. <laughs> so you want a show that plays highlights of a highlight show? Highlights from a highlight show. Genius. That's the worst idea you've ever had. Well, thank you. Here's every week at <laughs> robandjoeshow.com, on iTunes, Stitcher, and on the new Mike O'Mara Show app. For more information, visit us at morebroadcasting.com. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of the program is brought to you by LegalZoom. You know, most Americans don't have a will, but I have to ask this question in my Max von Sydow way. Oh, okay? excellent. Why? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you don't want the court to <laughs> You are the king of the one-word impression. To your property. <laughs> Thank you for appreciating that one. And it's Max von Sydow from an obscure movie called Hannah and Her Sisters. Yes. Why? Uh, you don't want the court dictating what happens to your property and minor children, right? right? Mondays are weird shows. So why procrastinate? Most people say too expensive or too time-consuming. My answer, LegalZoom.com. Oh, yeah. Too expensive? LegalZoom's prices just make sense. Too time-consuming? It takes just 20 minutes, and LegalZoom guides you through from start to finish. The service was developed by some of the best legal minds in the country, and they make it painless for you to get the legal help you need. In fact, helping people get legally protected has been their mission and passion for over 13 years. During National Make-A-Will Month, get special pricing on wills and living trusts by entering TMOS in the referral box at checkout. Again, that's discount code TMOS. It's National Make-A-Will Month, so don't wait. Protect your family, protect your future at LegalZoom.com today. LegalZoom was developed by top attorneys to provide self-help services at your specific direction, but they're not a law firm. Legal help was furnished through vetted independent attorneys. That's LegalZoom.com, discount code TMOS, everybody. From around the globe, across the nation, looking through your neighbor's window, the Mike O'Mara Show now presents news you may not need. A comprehensive look at the stories you may or may not be talking about during your daily activity. And now, news you may not need. Two things for our uh, West Coast fans. Thank you for all the wonderful feedback over the weekend. We'll be talking more about that as the week progresses. And uh, a powerful earthquake uh, struck California. Uh, you did yesterday out in wine country. Yeah. Got a lot of listeners out there. Uh, caught many people sound asleep. It sent dressers and mirrors crashing down. You saw the video with all of the, uh, the, you know, the wine falling off the racks. Uh, very scary. And a lot of uh, homes were damaged or destroyed out there. Very scary. All the pictures of those wine cellars with the thousands and thousands of broken bottles the mothers of loudon county are in mourning <laughs> yes yeah absolutely yeah all women all over northern virginia are going what am i gonna do they sounded like max von Sydow. <laughs> why <laughs> the magnitude 6.0 quake struck at 3 20 a.m pacific daylight time sunday near uh the uh city of napa an oasis of Victorian era buildings. The fires also flared in mobile home parks around the area. So our best goes out to everybody out there in Napa, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll be on the mend soon. But Some injuries, scary. but as of this morning, no deaths. Thank cool. God. <laughs> For the second straight year, Miley Cyrus tried to steal the show at the MTV Music Video Awards, uh, but. It was for a very different reason. Uh, this time, Miley's Wrecking Ball won Video of the Year. Instead of taking the stage, I don't know if you saw the video of this, she sent up a uh, uh, saw this. attractive, good-looking guy yeah. who was a homeless guy that uh, accepted the award. And she, uh, New York papers say former homeless guy. Former home. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So it's not oh, really? quite what it seemed to ah, be. It was apparently. a sweet oh, message. It was a nice yeah. message, but yeah. Really? I Former missed that homeless. One. Yeah. I did. I, I was wondering how that would play out. So I uh, I did a little. I think it was the New York Daily News said former homeless guy Jesse. Really? Yeah. Uh, he accepted the award for the quote 1.6 million runaways and homeless youth in the United States who are starving, lost, and scared for their lives right now. And you know what? Hey, she's trying to do some good. She's that's trying sweet. to uh, use her fame to yeah. uh, identify a problem in this country, and I think that's good. And I don't doubt even if he was formerly homeless that there are still tens of thousands sure. of homeless in Los Angeles and uh, and other big cities. So you know, say la vie, Rob Spiewak. Right away. Sank. Rob Spiewak Siddick. You yeah. know? Well, I didn't trust if her. If the guy had been fat, if the oh, guy had been fat, yeah, Rob would not have Googled it. Oh, the know? worst thing is a fat homeless guy. What she That's needs right. is a, <laughs> some sort of old hobo with no teeth and a handkerchief tied on a stick. Yeah, to be honest with you, but <laughs> no. maybe she was thinking 
She doesn't want to do that because that'll turn people off. Also, Maybe she wanted to help out. It's, you know. it, again, the guy, it, it, everybody on Twitter was killing her. Because like if you're, I guess if you're homeless and look like Brad Pitt, you can get on the VMAs with Miley Cyrus because he was so good looking, right? Right, right on. But the reality, I think, behind it is that if she's going to use this platform and it's meant really for kids. True. And then to expose people with something that people don't talk about anymore. Does anybody talk about homelessness anymore? Mm-hmm. No, no, right? Nobody does. No, and it's uh, it's you know all you have to do is drive into a metropolitan area or even an yeah. outlying area, and yeah. you'll see it. It's everywhere. It sucks. It's positive. It really does. So, positive yeah, message. Positive. <laughs> Richard Attenborough was the Lord and Oscar-winning director for the much lauded Gandhi and an unflagging pillar of British cinema. But Attenborough, who died Sunday at ninety, was best known. I didn't know this as Dicky. That Did was his know, nickname? Uh, Dickie. How oh, nice. Baby faced, uh, you didn't know this, Rob, as a young actor and uh, whitely bearded in his older, uh, older age, Attenborough, warmly known as Dickie Darling, <laughs> wow. presided over six decades of British movie making. I guess that was kind of his. British name. We didn't call him that over here, did we? No, no. no, no. I always was the biggest fan, Mike, of in surround sound, hearing the man eat ice cream in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Do you have it? I don't have it. I'm sorry. I Will just, you have it tomorrow? I can pull you. I would... Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> I do, actually, I do have this, Mike. Hold on. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And I think we might get some mouth noise in this clip. I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Something that was real. Something that I could see and touch. Creation is an act of sheer will. Makes time a little bit flawless. He should have used the amber to tighten those dentures. Here's the quote from Richard Attenborough. I have no great interest in being remembered as a great creative filmmaker, he told the New York Times. Uh, right after Gandhi was released in 82, he said... I want to be remembered as a storyteller. Well, Richard Attenborough, you nice. told some amazing stories, and I tip my hat to you. 50 Cent doesn't think Floyd Mayweather can read well, <laughs> or at all. Did you see any of this online? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be addressing the, this in the audio vault today. The pair used to be friends, but things have changed. The rapper challenged the boxing champion to read one page of Harry Potter's book out loud as part of the A. ASL, ELS, or perhaps ESL ice bucket challenge. Exactly. <laughs> if successful, that was a joke. Mr. Scent will donate $750,000. Thanks for supporting uh, ALS research, I guess. Uh, 50 Cent is the second rapper in recent weeks to imply that Floyd Mayweather is not a Rhodes Scholar. And you had, you, didn't you play that on Friday? Some of him reading? Actually, we play uh, that off air. And we will have it in today's yeah. audio vault. So oh, we did stay it off tuned. Air. It, it bleeds together. See, we yeah. have so much fun here all the time. When you, so, when uh, you listen, you, at first you're like, all right, can he really read? And then you listen, and there's a feeling that rolls over you. It's a little yes. sickening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, well, $72 million. That's what he said he's got. So, you know, whatever. Uh, quick update. If I find a Justin Bieber story, you know I share it with you no of matter course. how obscure. Please. This is just a throwaway. It's a teeny little one. Uh, uh, Justin Bieber update. Still a punk. Justin got tired. This is, I don't know who it's attributed to. I don't know whether it's corroborated. I have no idea. But I share it with you whenever Thank it's you. a Justin Bieber story. Got tired of sitting in L.A. traffic on Thursday, so he drove his three-wheel can-am spider motorcycle on the sidewalk what a jerk ass uh justin is on probation for pelting his neighbor's house with eggs so he could have gotten in real trouble for this if a cop was around once again no attributions i'm gonna say yes he did it guilty thank you held thank 100 percent guilty mike appreciate that regardless of how you feel about the als ice bucket challenge no one is going to be a fan of this a company is now selling an ice bucket challenge Halloween costume. Boo. There it is. Yeah, let's hit the booze. Come on, Man. come on in, boys. Boo. Thank you. Boo. Yeah. Boo. The Boo. costume is a blue plastic bucket with a sheet of plastic coming out and face fake ice cubes attached to the sheet. Uh, you have to walk around holding it over your head all night. La la la. Uh, the costume also comes with a blue ice cube tray that you can carry with your other hand. <laughs> it's on sale for thirty nine ninety nine. F them. F them. Jesus. Screw them. Yeah. Nobody buys it. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Uh, a little something, something for you okay. right now. Uh, 58-year-old Richard Gibson of Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, Lafayette, rather. Have, uh, he has the most disgusting hobby in the world, and we're not exaggerating here. For the past 36 years, you know what he's been doing? What? He has been keeping every single one of his fingernail and toenail clipping. Yuck! Oh, God. Yeah. And putting Boo. them in a jar. A jar? Yeah. 
1978, he was 22. He started collecting his nails. Now, that sounds like Andy Rooney should have. In 78, he was 22. He started collecting his nails. Now he's 58 years old, and he's still going. Oh, uh, he said his uh, nail clippings are his most cherished possession. Uh, it always hasn't been like that. He displays them on a shelf in his house. His ex-wife... Uh, uh, complained about it that's why i guess mm. she's his ex-wife yeah. uh, just to make things a little grosser richard doesn't cut his nails off and he waits until they're really 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 long mm. nice and, gross. and if you're babysitting some kids and they're terrible you probably just grit your teeth and get through the night take your money and refuse to watch them again or you could do what this lady did 57 year old martha dreher is a babysitter in austin texas she's been watching two girls and apparently they were quote very disrespectful. Oh, dear. So, when the family was out earlier this month, she broke into the house and she set it on fire. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. A security camera caught her breaking into the house, then leaving about 20 minutes later. Oh, I should no. not be laughing at this. No, this one of the family it's members. close to home for you, Mike. One of the family members eventually got home and saw the smoke. No one was hurt in the fire, but there was a lot of damage. Now Martha's been arrested for arson, but she pleaded not guilty and says she didn't start the fire. Is it just me? Uh, but if they said the house was on fire and I was the babysitter, I would have said that the children were wonderfully behaved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, they got the disrespectful from her. Yeah, you know, and yeah. she's uh, guilty, you moron. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back with the audio vault and Rob Spiewak right here on The Mike O'Mara Show. Do you talk C++? Do I? Oh, God. Can you tell Ned into port 25 and click an email? Okay. Can I? Do you like to surf the back plane of a router? Yes, I do. Have you ever hex edited your way to a registered version? Sounds sexy. We're not going to be talking about any of those things, but what will we be talking about, Oscar? It's technology and the way it affects your life. And we're going to be combining a lot of entertainment. It's going to be a good time. This is not your father's tech show. <laughs> tech 411 show available on the More Broadcasting Network and on iTunes. That means it's good, so please check it out. Great show, horrible promos. Okay. Oh, by the way, a tip of the hat. Not just uh, compulsive as far as your downloads for your iPhone, but the new Michael O'Mara Show updated app is out today. I just oh, got awesome. the email during the show. Yay! Cool. So update your Michael O'Mara Show app. And update your uh, your compulsive app and give them both five star reviews. And update those go. promos. Yes. <laughs> please give us a new promo. Please, please, yeah, please, yeah. please. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Definitely. All right. Very good. Please. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, time to open up the audio vault for Monday, August 26, 2014. Brought to you by FanDuel.com. Everybody loves fantasy football, and the hot new trend is weekly leagues. The best place, you know this, the best place for your weekly leagues is FanDuel.com, the leader in one week fantasy football leagues for real money. Money. You can win cash each and every week with immediate cash payouts. And Rob Spiewak is already playing with preseason football. I'm going to do better next time, Mike. I got in a league and I had a wondrous lineup, including Peyton Manning and Wes Welker and Nate Burleson. And I came in 100th. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. That's all right. You got to work on your technique. But you know what? It was fun. It was yeah. a he came in 100th. What he didn't tell you was, uh, you know how many people were in the league? 50. I know. Uh, <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> now, the great thing about FanDuel.com, there's no season-long commitment, no upfront fees, contest entry fees. Start at just a dollar. FanDuel has more players and pays out more cash than all the other one-week fantasy sites combined. Just ask Chris Prince of Detroit. He's won over. Are you ready for this, Rob Spiewak? Yeah, yeah. $656,000 playing fantasy sports on FanDuel. Well, then you that would too. be more than me. Join the 278,000 people who have already won cash playing one-week fantasy sports on FanDuel. Sign up today and use the code TMOS, and FanDuel will even match your first deposit. Dollar for dollar, up to 200 bucks. Football season, baby! FanDuel will pay out over $400 million this year, but you can't win if you don't play, so sign up right now. Remember, FanDuel.com. Click the microphone. Use the code TMOS. The first 50 code users today get their deposit matched up to $200. That's free money. Oh, FanDuel.com where every week is a new season. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com and sign up today. Let's go to the Audio Vault with Rob Spiewak. Alright, very good. Because we teased it, let's lead with this. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was uh, trying to read liners at Power 105 for the Breakfast mm. Club. And you know what a liner is. It's basically a small endorsement or a promo read by a celebrity. Yes. This is the thing that 50 Cent got on board with, right? right. That he said he has uh, some, some issues. And, and he so, does. And uh, so this is uh, the good folks at the Breakfast Club were 
were kind enough to play this on their radio Usually station. Usually, when us. you do these, you go into a separate booth and yeah, they like do a different takes. A production right. room. It's yeah. really supposed to be private, yeah. but it's meant, you know, for pu- for the public. But if you have well. an engineer in any circumstance, yeah. you're going to a tape source and you're, yeah, you know, yeah, somebody's yeah. listening to yeah. it. I never held on to outtakes, Mike. Um, no, here's Rob a, didn't. Here's Floyd Everyone. Mayweather. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I, I've, I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes, your, okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes movement to support hiring vets. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. By the way, it's iHeart Radio, I Radio, and it's yeah. not a typical, not a typical thing to read. Your stripes. Movement to support. Hi. Okay. Oh God, this is pain. It's hurt, doesn't it? All right, we get it. We get All right, it. We so get anyway, it. Okay, so that's that. it. And that's why Fifty Cent is doing what he's doing, and uh, the the bet and stuff like. Hey, you know what? The fact is, uh, you know, we had uh, first first ladies that uh, you know made it a cause. The yeah, fact right. is that it is sad, and it's something we ought to uh, try to eliminate and not just uh, exploit a guy for it. But uh, you know, it, the, the, Floyd Mayweather probably brings it on himself a little bit because he's so damn flashy to, at the same time. To with give the, you background, and you're right, Mike, because you can't be so, if you're so braggadocious about everything. Everything. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to get called out. You're a celebrity. Absolutely. So they used to have a friendship, and what led to this is they had a business dispute where uh, 50 Cent says that Floyd Mayweather owes him like a million dollars, right? Because he, 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 helped he him saved set up, his company. He helped him set up his company while he went to jail. Right. And instead of just giving the man the money, and that's where the root of all these problems comes from, these dollars, right? Right. Yep. right. And, yep. and he says, no, no, I didn't ask you to do any of that, and it turns ugly into... Uh, you know, just kind of the, Calling t- the him tweet, out. the you, the the Instagram, and now people have worked with him in the past, found this audio, and said, "Oh yeah, we do have this. You are right." Yeah, so it's tough. That. Yeah. Let me it's change sad. the topic to something that brought me great joy this weekend. I hope someday to be as cranky as this old man, Mike. You know, Steve Bridges, the owner out in Iowa of our KCJJ yeah, station out there. He's ninety-two years old. He's a and beautiful man. Beautiful, beautiful human <laughs> and I being. Nice play you. I want to play I want to be with him. I want to be with him carnally. I want you to hear his ice bucket challenge. First of all, Jan won't help me. <laughs> Suter doesn't want anything to do with it. I can't get any ice out of the refrigerator. The ice maker's broken. <laughs> it's not easy. I'm taking off my uh, hearing aids. I don't want to get my hearing aids. I got to remove my hearing aids. <laughs> I don't want to wreck my hearing aid. <laughs> Here's a bucket. It's cold water, no ice. <laughs> there, you happy? <laughs> Damn happy. I'll give money to the cause. You happy now? Look at me now. You happy? It's a bunch of bullshit. You happy? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite ALS oh, ice bucket challenge. Oh my god, that is oh. fantastic! Oh, that He's is great. I'm going on his show tomorrow. That's fantastic. I love that. Mike, can you name this blues singer? Give it a sec. <laughs> I need your guess, please. Chuck Moody. No, the answer is uh, if you were at the Tacoma Park nightclub Republic, uh, Mayor Barry came in wow. and sat in with the band. This is Marion Barry. And the thing that breaks my heart, he's not that bad. He's pretty well, good. it's blues. It's I know, blues. understood. Here's a bulletin. I was a blues man, okay? All the right. reason I was is because the more challenging music, no one attempts to play. But it's That's the, the mayor. It, it is it's the, mayor. the mayor. It's it the is. mayor for life, yes. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Smiling and sweating. And there my contrary <laughs> to popular belief, the tongue is not the strongest muscle in your body. It's been reported that contrary to popular opinion, the tongue is not the strongest muscle in the body. Yeah. Study was conducted by several disappointed women. <laughs> That's your magic audio book. Have a great Monday, everybody. Uh, this concludes our broadcast day, but dry your eyes. It's not goodbye. Just so long. You can always write us a letter. Send it to TMOS PO Box 2796, Leesburg, Virginia, 20177. Or email all your technical queries to Ponyboy at <laughs> Mike <laughs> O'Mara so wrong. Show dog.
gmail.com. Don't have the other addresses for you. I ran out of time doing that. But, uh, have, a, have a good Monday, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike O'Mara here to remind you that if you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a will, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need to help take care of the details. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Enter discount code TMOS for more savings at LegalZoom. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs>